Here we go. Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. Look who we've got in the house for our 1,000th video. In Is one this thousand. episode 1,000? I feel very honoured. Episode 1,000, and we started it together, didn't we, Rico? 1,000. We did. 1,000 and two days ago, so that's not bad going, is it? No. How many years have you now been doing this? Two years? Three years this October, although the first video I don't think went out on November. No, I think oh, okay. November, something like that. So you'd have to check on that thing if you go online. I think it's, I think it's November, October or something. So. We've been, it's been uh, a wild ride. It's been a wild ride, hasn't it? Lots of uh, interesting comments from fans, lots of uh, phone calls to Dennis's office and other people, threat, lots of people threat, pissed off. Death threats, fly, yeah. tip, fly tipping on me, drive at me old house, although I'd moved, so that was unlucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it? You have some ups and downs, you meet people, you fall out with people, don't you? You disagree with people and boxing's one of them sports, I think, that it gets everybody at it, doesn't it? Everybody falling out and, you know, it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it's a funny sport because people take uh, stuff very personally. So, obviously, if you support a football team, right, you very sort of partisan towards a football team by boxing it's turned into this thing where you're supporting promoters, you aren't supporting fighters anymore. So people get upset if you say something about a fighter of a certain promoter or you say something about a promoter. It's, it's quite strange, isn't it? People have stopped supporting fighters. They support promoters now. Yeah, yeah, they do, yeah. It's, uh, well, what we've got now, we've got promoters getting themselves out there and making it about them, haven't we? Well, we do. One, one in particular... Uh, we don't even need to name his name because I think everybody knows. It's, I mean, yeah, Eddie's a bigger star than most of his fighters. I imagine if he walked down the road with John Ryder and Callum and Smith, more people would say, uh, you know, ask for his autograph or picture for him than rather than a guy that's uh, the best super middleweight in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is John Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to ask you, Rico, while I've got you on, about the zone. What yeah. You, what Thomas Hauser's explosive article on boxing scene today. What do you think to that? Yeah, I think probably need to go back a bit because at the beginning of the pandemic, there was talk about the zone trying to raise half a billion uh, because the finances weren't well, uh, just to cover everything off. And they did manage to raise that money. So the Russian billionaire that owns it has, to, has had to invest his own money. They've obviously had a change of CEO as well. And because of the pandemic, they've realized that it's probably an opportunity to, cha to change their model because the model of charging people $10 a month or whatever it is, just to watch boxing doesn't really work. I mean, boxing is a big sport. I mean, it's the fifth most watched sports on the zone's platform. So now what they'll probably do is get pay-per-view on and, you know, do advertising, right? Because can you really say that the zone has been a success? What do you think, Ross? No. They've only got 800 subscribers up to March. Yeah, 800,000. That's it, exactly. No, so they won't release the numbers, will they, what they've got now? No. But they'll brag so, about it in March, won't they? Exactly. And I think what they realise is that they need to get more sports on that you can't just rely on boxing in the US or in any market. So if you think about Sky Sports, right? People buy Sky Sports because of the football, not because of the boxing. Yeah. I, I saw some figures that the next-gen fight between Riakpo and Jack Massey last December, 8,000 people tuned in to watch that. Imagine on Sky Sports, 8,000 people. Like th this is how big boxing is. It's not a big sport at all. So you can't be overpaying guys like Canelo or others to, you know, insane fees. Yeah. So I think what they're probably looking to do is they've spoken about coming to the UK and I know they beta testing at the moment. So people can get the app and test in the UK because they're meant to launch, bless you, they're meant to launch uh, in April time. 
and they didn't uh, because of what happened. So I think they were planning to launch on this Canelo against somebody in the autumn. But it's it's a hard time to launch or to do big fights because Zone has kept much money to its fighters. So somebody like Canelo is making 35 million a fight, but Golden Boy isn't getting eight revenue. How do how does the zone actually make the money? So if you 35 million, just quick math. If they put the fault in- that equates with ten dollars, that sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, I know what you. I know what point you're getting at there. If they put the Canelo fight on and Canelo gets what he's entitled to in his contract, the zone just go deeper and deeper and deeper into the red, don't they? Yeah, exactly. And if if he had 800,000 subscribers in the US at before this pandemic, now to guarantee that 35 million just on subscribers, so not talking about selling the rights to other countries, you need three and a half million subscribers. Just so it's quite, it the gap is huge, isn't it? The gap is huge and yeah. it doesn't make sense. And why should Canelo take less money? And I think what that will mean in the coming months for of these matchroom US guys is like Andrade, Mikey Garcia, Brograys. They won't get the monies that were promised to them or they can't get the purses that were promised to them before when they signed up. And also, they'll end up getting cheaper opponents because somebody like Dervichenko, they're not going to pay him four or five million to face anyone, right? Andrade will be fighting against a tomato can or someone quite cheap. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the zone... When it comes to the UK, that raises a lot of issues because Eddie's obviously a Sky promoter. So what if Joshua fights? Will that fight be on the zone in the US and then Sky in the UK? And how does how does the zone feel about that? Because if they want to make a bang in the UK, they need to get Joshua onto the platform. Um, and also, if guys like Callum Smith are fighting over in the US, where will that be, Ed? So I think Eddie's in a very hard position at the moment because there's only launching here, so he sort of needs to choose which side of the aisle he's sitting at. Yeah, and of course, we Eddie Earn working with his own and his own coming over here, that's not going to go down too well with Sky, is it? But we said that he were going to whore himself out to both and just he'll go. They go. They'll go where the money is then, but they could end up with nobody, couldn't they? In end. Yeah, they could do. I mean, if. MTK impress. I mean, the golden contract, I don't know what the numbers are like, but if MTK start actually promoting shows properly, like the big shows, so the likes of Frampton and others, and move these fighters over to MTK promotion and Sky offers them money, there's a very real possibility that MTK World Boxing Super Series, if it continues and other things, then end up becoming Sky's boxing product. They don't need to necessarily have a big stable. They'll just buy the best fights and put to put together a tournament because Sky as well have lost a lot of subscribers. And do they really want to be investing this money in boxing if you know next gen cards are getting eight thousand views and the quality's gone down? Maybe Sky will pull back a bit from boxing. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened that Sky pulled back from boxing. Maybe. Uh, this is how I look at it, right? The landscape's changing now. For the better, I think, for other promoters and other people in industry. But there's not just going to be a top table where a certain few are dining out on millions of pounds. The same yeah. people that certain YouTubers just want to interview all the time. There's not going to be just the same old 25 people earning a lot of money and doing a lot of views that it's going to even itself out now. And of course they're all scrambling now, aren't they? These YouTube channels because they're, yes. they're in a bit of a pickle as well, aren't they? Because it's their livelihoods are on the YouTube business as well as mine. And it's just a bit of a hobby in it really. Yeah. But you aren't reliant on going to shows and interviewing guys there. So when boxing comes back and you aren't allowed to have, media that or even if you're allowed to media there to write and set isolated but you're not going to be allowing people with cameras into the changing rooms and interviewing people in the stands are you so this could be a six to 12 month period where you can only do zoom interviews of fighters and during fight week do you think they want to sit on zoom and do a load of interviews they might do like a zoom press conference and that's it so 
I think, yeah, I think you're right that for the guys that rely on actually interviewing people at the fight nights and weigh-ins and, you know, boxing characters around, it becomes a lot more harder to do that because we haven't seen from the Frank Warren show this weekend, there aren't interviews off there, are there? Like, people aren't interviewing Joe Joyce or Dubois. Uh, this is how I look at it, right? Now, you, there weren't many YouTubers there, were there, at weekend on Frank's show. But... No. The, a lot of people on the who do YouTubing, they can't do what I do, right? Because they need to be asking somebody from behind the camera. They can't just do what I do because they don't want to rock the boat, do they? So they haven't got that many strings to the bow, have they? You know, no. Trick it, ponies aren't a bit like Wilder. One trick pony, one punch Larry. But I'm not going to diss any YouTubers because the people put the effort in and go to the shows and let me tell you this, I know what it's like just to go to one show. I can go film an amateur show for three hours, four hours. Well, let me tell you this, when I get in the car at the end, I'm knackered. So God knows what yeah. they're creeping about. It is hard graft, mate, and it's all up here. And you know, and they're running around with tech stuff and all that. And I'm not tech minded. I film a show and then I go on the next day, I get it I, I send press a button and somebody else puts it out. But point I want to make is that it's an hard slog. It's a very, very, very hard slog. And you've got to give people credit who go to them shows. But my argument with it, Rico, is they're only interviewing, like I've just said to you, 25 people. There's nobody else they're interviewing, are they? See where I'm coming from? Yeah, I think it, it's sort of one of those things that they know which people do the numbers, so they interview them, so they're not actually giving exposure to the yeah, other guys. Like that, which, it? which defeats, well, it defeats the object of doing it, right? It, it defeats the object of having a boxing channel um, in many ways, that you're only going to the big shows and you're only interviewing people that are big names, because surely you should be giving the guy that's bottom of the card exposure, or, you know, guys at small hall shows, because they, they need it more, right? They need it a lot more. Let me tell you this, right? If you go on box rack, go on box rack, you'll see that since April 2015, since I went to Dennis's first show, Dennis has done, if you, if you go on box rack and check, it's, I think it's about 38 shows, right? In that period. Not once have certain YouTubers been to any of his shows in that period. Not once. But yet they'll come up here to Sheffield and go to Ingle Gym and hang out at the back of them but they can't go around the corner to Glyn Rhodes' gym or Dennis's gym or Mick Wales' gym. So yeah. it's because of viewers. I don't think it's because they don't like boxing. I think they're all boxing fans, but it's a view-driven business. There's numbers. There's numbers. Look, what about the sport? And people have lost their minds chasing money and they've forgotten about themselves. For example, this we does own. Everything that Eddie Earn said... I called him out on it two years ago and it's come home to roost. But he's not bothered now because he he's he's had his percentage of that hundred and twenty five million, hasn't he? The, yeah. He's had he's had his twenty percent of hundred and twenty five million, which is what? Twenty five million, is it? He's had his twenty five million, hasn't he, over two years from the zone. Plus all other stuff. Yes, so I'm... they're not bothered. It's like Chris Eubank senior. <laughs> Once Collins beat him twice, that were it. And Barry Hearn didn't even win them purse bids for them fights. They ended up fighting in Ireland because they don't invest. They don't win purse bids. They don't bring kids through from scratch, do they, that are not Team GB. Am I right? They've never had a world champion from that's, that's... that's been born in Britain and not been Team GB. Not one. ABI Nigerian. And, of course, you know the other five, don't you? They're all Olympians, were not they? And we know what, how that goes on, but we don't want to go down that line. It's boring. So, greed... I mean, they don't take it... Come on, sorry. What, what are you saying? I was just going to say, your point is correct. I mean, they're not going to take a punt on the guys. So, if you look at the... the Frank Warren Roston, Frank. It's gone, it's gone still with really a coat picture. <laughs> what 
What is it with you, you, you people down south with your tech stuff? I've got the same problem with Terry on the phone. We get Zoom and you froze, Rico. Rico, your pictures froze. If calling Rico, your face has frozen on the screen. <laughs> What's going on here? Hey there, Rico. What's happening here? We're halfway through. Where's Rico? Where are you, Rico? Oh, Rico's back. Hey, back, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why. Back. Back. Back Rico's back. Um, Rico's back. Rico's back. <laughs> yeah, go on. No, I was just going to, about to say that if you look at that Frank Warren roster, um, a lot of the guys he has are good amateurs. I haven't been Team GB guys because they were only most unstable for obvious reasons. But guys like Anthony Yard, for example, is a guy, he didn't win the world title, but he was covered pretty much from scratch. And these are guys that would be recommended to Frank because the amateur coaches, he has an eye for talent in his team. Also, the amateur coaches recommend guys, and he listens, and he takes punts, and, you know, he can tell to them. But, but A, it's always Team GB, Team GB. And a lot of these Team GB guys, like, if you look at that class from 2016, Probably. yeah, 2016, like, how none of them have really made him. Died a death, aren't they? Class of 2016. Died a death. Yeah. Who, who'd open the curtains to watch Akoli or Boazzi? Nobody, would they? Well, Nobody. And I think that. Well, that's it. Exactly. You're still, re you're still recording, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's got off? Why is it recording? No, no. It, it's, it, it's still recording. So that's good. Just right because I dropped off that it's not recording. <laughs> Isn't it recording? No, it's recording. Oh, yeah. Recording. Now, what I was going to say is that uh, Callum Johnson and Anthony Yard, Callum Johnson, Callum Smith, uh, Jose Burton, all them all them guys, Baturbia, they've all got to start making fights now. If They're, they're talking about charging pay-per-view, aren't they, now at the zone and, and it being a fair few quid. Now, I yeah. don't think that'll go down well in England, but... They've got to start putting proper, proper, proper fights on the fights where we go. Do you know what? That's a proper fight. Not Ted Cheeseman against Sam Eggington. Look, that's a fight, yeah. And it, and they're both at a similar level, but it's not an headliner, is it? Come on. Shouldn't be an headliner, should it? No. no. And, I and, mean, and, and, and we're guys in a coming off losses, now. right? We're in a situation now where we're saying, whoa, Cheeseman, Eggington, what a fight. What a great fight. But it's headlining, but that's where we're at now because we've been served up that much bad bar, haven't we? Is they even for title or anything? I know, yeah. It's not good, is it? That's like, that is, but I mean, Cheeseman's lost the British title fight. That's an area level fight, isn't it? Yeah. So some of the matchups Dennis puts up. Are better on paper. They might not be as big names, but in terms of titles and quality of fighters and achievements, they are much better on paper. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see some proper fight. Callum Johnson's a British and Commonwealth champion. Yard's not won a British or a Commonwealth, has he? Oh, has he won a common? No, he hasn't won a Commonwealth, has he? Yard. I don't think he's won anything. Has uh, he? Yard, probably not. No, no, I don't think he has. But he did well against Kovalev, so we have to give Anthony Yard credit. But I would like to see Anthony yeah. Yard in against Johnson or Anthony Yard against Callum Smith. I mean, Callum Smith, they seem to have wrapped him in cotton wool waiting for Canelo fight, and then they're going to sell it as, well, he beat his brother up, Liam. 
that's how they're going to sell it, I've been told. So, But whether they get it or not, I don't know. But have you noticed now Joe Gallagher's outwit begging bowl? They want it now, don't they? Well, exactly. They want um, it. Yeah, Callum said his other when he was country was very excited. But somehow they managed to stifle the hype. Like they managed to make him into a very boring character. Well, they managed to make his career very boring and un- uninteresting. His best win is the Bosch Girls. And yeah, I don't think he's won the World Boxing Super Series, but they haven't done that momentum. When have we seen Callum Smith in a fight where we said he was going to get beat tonight? You know, like a frotch booty. Oh, yeah. <coughs> When everybody were like, ooh, God, that's an hard fight for Carl Froch. When have we seen Callum Smith, who's got a ring belt, when have we seen him in a fight and we've said, you know what, you get beat tonight, him, or he's in a really hard fight. We haven't, have we? Because <clears throat> he's been wrapped in cotton wool. When have... I, mean, I, I think we probably have <coughs> to say higher, but it wasn't a fight that they elected to make right, it was the tournament. He was well paid for that. It was one of those <laughs> where he had no option to grow. Yeah, I know that. But point I want to make is, when have we seen Beefy Smith in a fight? Who's Beefy Smith's best win? Can you tell? Um, that guy Thompson, that six or two, uh, one five, one five, uh, two fight. Nobody's seen afterwards, right? That's the one who won the vacant title. He's a proper opposition, is he? Imo were ranked 87 on Boxer and he's fighting for a world title that's vacant. Uh, oh. But all Gallagher fighters have got padded CVs, all of them. But he threw Callum Johnson to Baturbia, didn't he? But he wouldn't throw Callum Smith, would he, to him? You know what I mean? You don't hear Baturbi or Beaterby, whatever you want to call him. You don't hear his name mentioned with Callum Smith, do you? I remember Joe Gallagher no. telling somebody I know, well, Callum's not moving up. Have you seen the bogeyman at 175? And that was two and a half years ago, right? Two and a half years ago. That's why they went in that tournament. And still, it's killing him to boil down to 168. And still, and he still won't go to 175, mate. They can boil him down, they will, because at 175, they're killers, isn't they? Anthony well, Yard ices Callum Smith at 175, ices him, ices him, mate. He gets to him. He gets to him. Yeah, so right. John Ryder get to him. John Ryder got to him, but he didn't have the reach to finish him off. Yard will finish him off, I'm telling you. Yard will finish He's a good fighter, Callum, but he's protected, he's had it all his own way a bit like Joshua oh. wait, we've got three yeah, do you think they would be cashing out against Canelo? yeah yeah, probably cashing out against Canelo, I mean he's made millions Callum Smith, he's made millions and Joe Gallagher's made a couple of mil along the way so you can't say he hasn't done well for his fighters because you've never really seen any of them thrown under a bus have you, although he, you could say he threw a crawler under a bus for Linares, but the reward were great, wasn't it? And and the Lomachenko fight as well. So, but... All Isn't right. that the problem of boxing, right? Hey. We talk about um, somebody hey. making... A, isn't that the problem of boxing, that we talk about somebody making good choices for their fighter's career... Not from an entertainment standpoint, but just because they make a lot of money from easy fights or you know fights that make financial sense. Imagine if football was that, that you'd have Liverpool playing against Burnley every week, and Liverpool would win. Eight receipts were good. People would still tune in, but they'd never play against anybody good. Wouldn't we think that football's a shit sport in that case? Yeah. Isn't that the problem with boxing that we sort of that the focus has become about this management and stuff rather than making the good fights because nobody wants to see how these Callum Smith fights. Well, Callum Smith's masquerading as a world champion, but he's not got any decent wins on his record, has he? So, 
Well, listen, what I'm going to do, Rico, I'm going to see if this has done it because this is the first one. Um, uh, what are you doing for the rest of the day? You're going out for Not much. What, what what the uh, Premier League right, final round? Got it. Let me just see if this is recorded and then I'll get back to you. Yeah? Okay. All right. Keep in touch. Cheers, mate. All right. Keep in touch, mate. Cheers. Rico down there in London. Keep on praying. Oh, you hardcore boxing fan. Have a look. And press end.